So in this video, we're going to take a look at the LG C2 55 inch and test it for brightness, motion, shadow detail, all of that and more. Now I recently uploaded a review for the 48 inch C2, but that was limited for brightness, so I thought Let's leave a lot more of the detail for when we get the 55 inch. So we do go into more detail about some of the new features and stuff in the 48 inch review. So do make sure you go watch that after this one. Now I will do a video about the major differences between the 48 inch and the 55 inch because there are quite a lot. So I do think it's worth knowing before you buy. But for now, let's take a look at the 55 inch C2. So first off the bat, we have an entirely new design. I mean, it's not entirely new, it's still a rectangle, it's not a different shape TV. But the back is different, the stand is different, and it is so much lighter. Now, I cannot stress how bizarre the weight difference actually is. Even compared to this year's 48 inch, it's just bizarre. Now. This TV just looks and feels more premium than the last one, in my opinion. Now, it is bad news for those of you who like showing off how super thin your C1, your C10, C9 was. Now, the C2 ditches that super thin feel for something a bit thicker and a bit more spread out over the back. I mean, the TV is still thin, and you don't get the giant booty that you get on the C1 either. Now all of our ports are on the side of the screen, which means if you're wall mounting, you don't have to worry about missing out ports on the back, uh, but there is loads of room to make sure that all your wires keep hidden. We also have, in my opinion, a much better cable management system, which runs down the back where the power port actually comes out from. It is still fixed power cable, however now it's in the centre of the TV, and that means if you're using the cable management system, you get left with a lot more cable than you would on previous models. Now the most noticeable difference is the centre mounted stand. It's a lot smaller. Now despite the smaller stand and the lighter weight of the TV, it does still feel sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's going to be going anywhere very easily. Now the new stand does hold the TV a bit higher. Despite that, it's still not quite high enough to clear a soundbar, which is a little bit of a shame. I would have liked to see us be able to fit a soundbar underneath the TV. You could get away with it, but you might be clipping off just a little bit of the screen. Now, once we powered on, we have to set up WebOS, which is pretty much the same as last year. Uh, it's got a few new features and it is a lot more responsive and fast. Now, one of the most talked about new features of this TV is the Evo panel. The fact that this TV is meant to be brighter than previous models because has got better technology inside. So in theory, this TV should be considerably brighter than last year's TV. Well, it's not really. Now I did take some measurements and I'll get into more detail with that when I go into my C1 versus C2 video. But this TV is definitely brighter when measured under certain circumstances. You do need to have a couple of settings switched on to make the most of this. But then when you're watching with realistic settings to make the picture look as good as it can possibly look, there's not a huge difference in brightness. Now that isn't a problem in my opinion. The TV is pretty bright anyway. And the only time you're ever gonna really struggle is when you're in a very bright room with a lot of windows and a lot of lights. And I mean, in any normal room during the day or at night, you're gonna be fine. Overall, the picture quality on the C2 is fantastic. The biggest improvement, in my opinion, is the colors. Traditionally, colors have been better on other TVs like the Sony's, but the LG does a fairly good job of closing the gap. Now, the C2 does have a wider gamut, and that means it can reach a wider amount of colors. And this is particularly noticeable when looking at reds. Now, I certainly noticed this in a, just about everything I watched. As much as this TV is brighter, a lot of that brightness is actually going towards the colour. They're taking some of the brightness away from that white subpixel which sort of forces brightness and pushing it through the colour subpixels, the RGB ones. This means you can get a lot more colour out of the TV than you would previously. And with colours like reds which are notoriously difficult to get right on a TV, this does a fantastic job of improving it from last year. Now another thing that LG are labelling a win is the shadow detail. And it certainly isn't bad, I would say it's not got anything on the Sony's yet, but there are some slight improvements. Now there is still a bit of black crush on a lot of the darker greys, but 
it is perfectly acceptable in my opinion. Now in order to get the biggest improvement in shadow detail, you will need the AI Picture Pro mode and dynamic tone mapping switched on. Speaking of the AI Picture Pro, that's the AI LG uses to enhance picture quality, it is a lot better this year. Certainly there's a lot of improvements in depth creation, but also in light and contrast. Instead of before just making the entire image brighter, it actually keeps dark parts of the image dark and brighter parts of the image brighter. So this mode will enhance the image, but you do have to bear in mind, it is gonna be taking the image away from what the original producer might have intended. So if you are a realist and you want to make sure your films are as they were made and as they were designed, then maybe you will have this switched off. Previously, I probably would have recommended switching it off, this year, I'm quite happy to have it on. I think it does enhance the image. Now next, we're gonna talk about what some people could say is the main improvement in this year's TV, and that is motion. Now, in previous years, LG have been a little bit behind the pace when it comes to motion. Now, this year, I think the LG C2 has actually closed the gap on at least last year's Sony OLEDs. Firstly, at 120 hertz, the image is sharp and clear, even when moving around the screen. Now, at lower frame rates, the C2 does create a bit of motion blur, but there's absolutely no ghosting. Now, before on LG OLEDs, you had to choose between soap opera effect and judder. There wasn't sort of a very good middle ground which eliminated both. And that's not a great compromise. But this year the motion controls are a lot better. And you can definitely smooth out an image without being subject to loads and loads of artifacts. So for anyone who is sensitive to poor motion on TV and that might have kept you away from an LG OLED in the past, I don't think you have to worry about it as much this year. Now I've had a few comments asking about things like BFI, black frame insertion. This is where the TV will put black frames between frames at a lower frame rate in order to smooth out the image. People were concerned that that wasn't on this. It is on the C2, it's under a name called OLED Motion. And if I record in slow-mo, you can see it here. Now personally, I think motion on the C2 is actually good enough that you don't need to enable BFI, but it is there if you would like to use it. Personally, I wouldn't use it because it makes the screen considerably darker, having a black frame every other frame. So we do have support for AMD FreeSync and NVIDIA G-Sync, and all of that stuff that just makes gaming on the LG C2 so much better than the competition. I do think that the C2 is still winning the gaming battle. Plus, because of that game optimizer menu, you can very easily tweak all the things that are going to make a difference to your gaming experience really easily just from pressing one button. You can tweak anything that's important to gaming like shadows or motion. Now, I also think a big factor for people who are choosing the LG C2 as their TV is the fact that it just works. Now as much as webOS is a bit crowded, you can pretty much get to wherever you want to go very quickly and easily, and you can use the remote in a ton of ways with tons of different shortcuts. The software is super quick, you're not ever waiting for anything to load, and personally I haven't noticed any bugs yet, and I've had the TV from a very early stage. And lastly, things like CEC controlling other devices, that all works an absolute treat. I've had absolutely no issues whatsoever. Does it compare to a Sony OLED? Well, I don't have one here to be able to put it side by side with, but I can assure you the LG C2 is gonna be able to throw quite a lot of good punches. And I have to say, this TV is closing the gap between LG and Sony OLEDs. Now, has it overtaken them in movie and TV watching? Probably not, but the gaming is still better. And at launch price, with no discounts, it's still £100 or $100 cheaper than last year's Sony A90J. So imagine the difference when it gets to this Black Friday. What, what's that going to be? Now please, subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I upload my C1 vs C2 video. And click this video here to see my 48-inch review where I go into a bit more detail on some of the features and everything else not in this video. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Whoop!